Today we're going to talk about the most hated strategies to becoming a popular artist in the art community on every social media platform. Hey, how's it going and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about why the art community is slowly starting to hate the strategies artists are using to become popular in these current times and are either calling them corny, cringe, and just waiting for the slightest opportunity for the artist to make an innocent mistake so they can bash them on their favorite social media platform. The first hated strategy is join the iconic Pinterest or Instagram girls. I don't know why exactly, but this has become a staple for Instagram artists for quite some time now. And just looking at your favorite popular Instagram artists, you'll find some portraits of girls that are drawn to look like the kind of pictures you'll find on Pinterest with similar poses and color palettes. Some of these drawings are either inspired by the reference and then the artists add their own flair to it to make the image personal to them, while some are direct copies of the images with little to nothing change at all which we like to refer to as studies, if you will. These drawings usually get tons of likes and a ridiculous amount of engagement, making artists start to believe that the only way for them to grow their accounts, especially on Instagram, is for you to draw only cute girls. For some reason, these drawings and paintings have grown extremely popular, especially on Instagram. And almost every artist has either seen a few of these portraits on their timeline or has drawn some of them for themselves. Now, I can't exactly tell you why these kind of images work, but they just do. It seems the Instagram algorithm is much more likely to promote a drawing of a cute girl or a painting of a cute girl than that of a footballer or a monk or any other thing. This bias then caused artists to notice this shift with how the Instagram algorithm worked and then started making artists slowly focus on drawing only cute girls for their portfolios, especially on Instagram. Even I have fallen into the trap of trying to please the algorithm by trying to draw the cute Pinterest girl aesthetic without any purpose or story in the image. And not only have these types of images caused artists to slowly rely on drawing only cute faces, some people have questioned the authenticity of some of these portraits. Since it's clearly obvious that these drawings are based off of real photographs of people, then at least the person should be credited, right? Well, sometimes artists choose not to credit the original source because they believe they have modified the image and changed a lot of things, so therefore, they don't really see the importance of crediting the owner of the original photo, and sometimes some other artists just forget to credit the original owner of the image. Even Ross Draws fell into this trap and was accused of tracing over pictures of models and using their photos without credit or their permission and was called out after he used a reference image for his work and didn't credit the model even after he posted his final image, which still had her resemblance and after which he had to publish an apology and then properly credit the owner of the original photo. I think it's easy to fall into the trap of drawing the cute Instagram girl trend because it's very easy to do and get your account a ton of engagement with probably the least amount of work since you don't really have to do anything but look for reference of a cute girl and focus on nailing the resemblance. But after some time, it eventually gets boring because drawing the same faces over and over again doesn't give you enough room to improve because you're just stuck literally drawing almost the same features over and over again, even when the references are different. Try practicing with older people, younger people, children, or do it like how Sam does at Does It and put your characters in a scene or add some storytelling to the image to challenge yourself from time to time just to see how far you can progress instead of drawing the same old repetitive face over and over again. Next, we have drawing fan art. I think drawing fan art has always been the fastest way to get your work seen by fans of any intellectual property you equally enjoy and it has slowly become equally hated by some artists as well. Now drawing fan art is pretty broad since there are different ways fans can interpret their head canons of their favorite characters like drawing spicy versions of them, drawing rule 34 of their favorite characters which also gets a ton of heat in the art community, drawing romantic ships or sometimes shipping adult characters with characters who are literally minors which always gets frowned upon in the art community like bruh why are you even doing that? Or race swapping characters, gender bending characters, and all other sorts of fan art to appeal to an audience. But the most common reason I see for people hating on fan art is art theft. Artists who draw fan art have all complained so much about art theft and how they get to see their art used in different places and on merchandise without them receiving a single penny for the hard time they put and the amount of work they put just making that image. Some artists have also noticed that some accounts even claim 
claim to be the owners of the original work and post it, use it as their banners and PFPs without even mentioning the original artist or giving them credit at all. And all this is because they believe the artist is making art of intellectual properties that don't originally belong to them. So everyone is automatically given access to use them for free without compensating the artist in any way. Which is just not true. Because you're making fan art of popular characters doesn't mean you should get taken advantage of or not get paid for it. Even a huge company like Disney took some fan art from an artist and used it as official products for their parks and the artist had to make a series of TikTok videos calling them out which gained a lot of views and garnered a ton of support for the artist. A simple solution to this that could potentially turn this in your favor and get new viewers on your account while driving traffic to your website, portfolio or Instagram is to leave your name or watermark clearly and boldly written in some part of the image where it cannot be removed or erased without making significant damage to the image. So at least that way you get people going to take a look at more of your work if they really like your art style and are interested in maybe hiring you for a commission or something. Some people also hate seeing fan art of their favorite characters because according to them, no other artist can draw the character right and any other artist who tries to draw the characters in their art style is just going to destroy the characters. These people are such gatekeepers. They just can't stand seeing people enjoy the same things they enjoy and are having fun making art that they want to see for themselves. Let people draw what ever characters they want. Not everyone is supposed to bend to your obscure view of how you think a particular character should look or how you expect other people to draw a particular character. Different artists will depict a character differently so just let people be themselves and let people draw how they usually draw. Stop trying to force them to draw like a particular artist just because you enjoy that particular artist's art style. I found this post on the tapas forum where this artist was explaining why he hated fan art so much and ask if it will hurt his growth if he tried not doing fan art on social media. So I am on tapas, Instagram and YouTube and I want to be known for my art one day. I don't need to be uber famous or anything but I want to have at least something. I was thinking about starting a cute yaoi series with short stories however I hate 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 drawing fan art. I will much rather make my own characters rather than be confined to a specific universe. However, I am not saying that people who make fan art don't deserve credits and I do like looking at it. It just gives me anxiety though when it comes to making it. Does not drawing fan art on Instagram and other social media put me at a significant disadvantage or as long as I have good enough art, OCs and a story, will it be enough? And to be honest, that's a really good question. In my opinion, I think if you already have a decent amount of following, you can start making your own OCs and create stories surrounding them. And then try it out and see if your audience is interested in it. And if hopefully they are, you can begin to make more drawings of your OCs and finally try to crowdfund something or create a Patreon. But always make sure you're making art that you enjoy and you're passionate about. Because that's the only way you continue drawing when you don't have motivation or you get bored of drawing the same OC over and over again. Some other people also left very good takes on this topic so make sure you pause the screen to read all their comments I'm showing here because they're actually pretty good observations and a good way to understand how to use fan art in your portfolio as an artist. Next we have collaborations. I'm not sure collaborations are even getting any heat in the art community because I'm not even seeing a lot of artists doing collaborations again. A couple of years ago artists used collaborations to grow their accounts and how they did it was you'll basically find an artist that has a similar amount of following like yourself and you two could draw an image together or pick out specific things you each like to do in an image and then do them and share the image across all your social media platforms, tagging each other in all the images. That way each of your audiences get to see the other artists work and eventually follow them if they enjoy their art style. But now, I don't even know if that still happens. Everyone is so focused on drawing by themselves and trying to become the next Loish or Sam does arts and isn't even thinking about growing together with other artists as a community, which is just really sad to see to be honest. I really want artists to benefit from this video so if you're an artist and really want to try out doing collabs 
go down in the comment section leave your instagram or tiktok or whatever and comment what you'll be interested in doing like drawing or painting and i hope you'll find someone that will want to collaborate with you as well at least that way we can get artists collaborating and growing together again next we have instagram reels god i hate this one so much personally personally i hate this one so much i don't know about y'all but I personally hate the fact that in order for you to grow on Instagram in 2023 as an artist, you have to literally make videos of your work. It doesn't even have to be a step-by-step -step process of how you make your work. Just literally anything. Just make it a video. And that's the only thing Instagram is going to push out to other people before your art can get seen. Like, y'all have no idea how much I hate coming on Instagram and just seeing videos everywhere all over my timeline like i just want to see art and photography beautiful paintings concept art things that i enjoy not just memes and other funny videos and things that i don't even care about that much it's so annoying sitting down for hours making an image posting it and barely getting any attention on it but then just doing a little stupid video of the same image will get you hundreds of views like can we just take instagram to what it was before because it's honestly so tiring at this point i for one don't really care about it because i understand that the value of my work is not determined by the amount of likes it gets on social media media and if i can see any form of improvement in my drawings i'm happy with that but there are artists who are trying to make a career out of social media and now forcing them to adapt to unnecessary changes just because you're solely focused on making money on your platform is just ridiculous as a viewer i hate reels too i don't want to and won't wait to see what the payoff is in the video i want to see a picture of a work or detail or behind the scenes or whatever and read the blurb i don't care what is trending on tiktok even if I cared, I'd not be on that app. I don't like seeing artists feeling like they have to take the time to mimic what is on TikTok. The thing is, artists don't even have to feel like mimicking anything. The algorithm just automatically forces you into making videos because that is the type of content that gets promoted to a wider audience on Instagram now. So sadly, you're forced to make videos of literally anything regarding art if you want to see any type of growth on your Instagram. You could literally make memes with your art and you'll get followers. I also hate social media to promote my art. All it does is show me my art is not appreciated or liked on Instagram. I have never sold anything online. I get excited about a new painting and then I am shut down on Instagram. I have read Instagram is driving people to off themselves. Instagram is being sued for destroying teenagers mental health. I deleted the app. Enough of seeing pictures of pets getting millions of likes. I am sad my work isn't appreciated but I don't need to stick a knife into my heart by posting my art on Instagram wow that's really sad i want to see pictures of cute pets as much as i want to see drawings too but i also love my mental health so much that i spend more time off of the app than i used to now because it really does nothing but just promote unhealthy comparison between you and other people whom you have no idea what is going on in their lives so i just prefer to focus on improving outside of social media and then i come in from time to time just to post my work that way i still keep my sanity and then i get to share my my art with my audience. Not being successful in art, I've had a lot of time to notice things that make some artists successful. It's not so much talent as much as it is the people you know in real life. Covid's made everything rough of course, but get out, do art things, go to art shows, go to museums, visit events at your local art school, talk to people, make connections. I'm from the internet and I think you should know the people in real life will be much more beneficial than on here. This is so true. Networking plays a huge role in how much further you could progress your art career, especially if you intend to work in the industry as a concept artist or work in animation or video games. You get to meet people at cons or different art events like Lightbox. You become friends with them, share your art with them, and if you're lucky, if there's a job opening and your art fits the criteria they're looking for, they might just recommend you for the job and that's it you get hired and i believe you can also network on the internet as well if you really don't feel like going outside and touching grass since now it's so much easier with things like discord where there are different servers with artists learning together and sharing resources with each other so they can all grow together so find some servers and make some friends for every beginner artist just starting out their art journey or even artists who already have some experience but are frustrated with how increasingly 
difficult it's becoming growing a career out of your social media, I advise you to just take some time off for the sake of your mental health. Try out some other hobbies to take your mind off the stress of making art so you can later on come back fresh and motivated to begin the grind once again. Always keep finding new ways to improve your work and don't judge your art by how many likes you're getting on Instagram or how many views you're getting on your videos. Make art you solely enjoy and are passionate about. If you want to draw fan art, draw fan art. If you enjoy drawing OCs, draw as many original characters as you want. There's always someone willing to look at anything you create and is probably going to enjoy it as much as you did creating it. So don't be afraid to even try. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like, subscribe to my channel if you're new here, I'll really appreciate that, and share this video with a friend because I know a lot of people will benefit from listening to this. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.